More than a dozen senators are calling on the government to take tougher action on China for human rights violations. These senators saying that the best way to do this is to levy sanctions against top Communist Party officials using the Magnitsky Act. Now, this allows the government to impose targeted sanctions on foreign nationals, usually by restricting their access Ats, assets, rather, and their freedom of movement. And for more on this, we're now joined by one of the senators who helped write that letter. Senator Leo Husakos joins us right now in Montreal. Senator, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. Now, as I say, you and uh, colleagues came together and p uh, wrote this open letter. And essentially, you're making the, the argument that now is the time to put sanctions on China. So why now? Well, look, we've seen the Trudeau government now over the last year and a half use uh, soft diplomacy with China. And, of course, that hasn't been unique to Mr. Trudeau and his government. Many governments for decades now have been trying to use soft soft diplomacy with, uh, with the Chinese dictatorship. Uh, it clearly is not working. And we have now two detained Canadians who have been illegally detained. It's been crystal clear that their detention has been nothing more than a pol political retaliation for Canada respecting a fair extradition treaty with a democracy that we have. Uh, and I think uh, it's, it's abhorred, it's unacceptable, and the Canadian government has to start being more firm with this dictatorial regime. Uh, but are you concerned, though, because if you do essentially adopt these uh, sanctions under the Magnitsky Act, uh, are you concerned that this may actually harm the two Michaels as they are still in detention in the People's Republic? Uh, I think at the end of the day, the Canadian government has to show some firmness. The Chinese government gets emboldened whenever we appease them, when we kowtow. It's been shown time and time again that if you give a dictator too much space, they take advantage of it. I believe that at the end of the day, the two Michaels have been detained because Canada has been soft on dealing with the Chinese when it comes to human rights violations and the respect of rule of law. Now, there are former pol parliamentarians, you, you know this quite well, two uh, former foreign affairs minister among them, among them also a conservative foreign minister, uh, now calling on Ottawa to actually intervene in the Mung case, essentially to end the extradition proceedings to help with the two Michaels. What do you make of that suggestion? It's very disappointing to see former ministers of the Crown and former diplomats in this country who have had the honour and privilege of serving Canadians and Canadian interests kowtowing again to this communist dictatorship and basically being apologists and advocates for their agenda. Many of these former ministers and diplomats and, and civil servants are part and parcel of why we have this problem with China today. This is a country that has built the second largest economy in the world with unfair trade practices. This is a country that has had no respect for freedom, human rights, and the rule of law. And many of those signatories, are, unfortunately, have been uh, part and parcel in allowing China to do all these egregious things. And now, to add insight, salt to misery while we're in the probably the, the, the coldest period of, of diplomatic relations with our country, instead of standing up for values and principles Canadians believe in, they actually are becoming advocates for this Chinese dictatorial regime. Yeah, but you know, in the past, we, we did hear from Donald Trump on this issue, and he said, and this was a couple of years ago, he said that he would intervene in the Hmong case if it would help U.S. trade. So why should Canadians pay the price if even the American president sees this case as negotiable? Quite honestly, Donald Trump talks a good game when it comes to China, but he doesn't walk the talk. We've seen him take sporadic action against the Chinese, but they're always pulled back whenever uh, corporate interests uh, seem to come to the table and put pressure on the U.S. president. Uh, so I don't particularly look at him as the ideal example. I think we as a G7 country, we have leverage. Uh, the Chinese benefit largely by our great middle class market in this country. And it's time that our government puts on uh, its pants and shows the the Chinese regime that we will take action and hardcore action and lead the way, lead the G7, lead the Western democratic world when it comes to pushing back against this egregious uh, regime in China. You know, a lot of money uh, has been spent over the decades. Uh, ca Canadians essentially eyeing China as a trade partner for its exportable goods. Is that a market and a trading partner that Canada should really be doing business with? Or should we abandon China and those initiatives for our own economic stability? We should be doing uh, trade because we're a trading nation and Canadians benefit by it. But we shouldn't be doing it with a country that doesn't share our values and doesn't share our economic structure as well when it came, comes to labor laws, when it comes to human rights. Uh, we also have to understand that many of the apologists and advocates for China completely over-evaluate the Chinese strength and influence uh, in the Canadian economy. When it's all said and done, China makes up about 4% of our exports. 
And it's significant, though it's by no means that significant where we should be selling out our principles and our values when it comes to human rights. This is a country that has now over a million Uyghurs, Muslims, in an internment camp. This is a country that is trampling all over the democracy movement in Hong Kong. This is a country that hasn't respect, respected its international obligations, where they were supposed to provide for Hong Kong a principle and respect the principle of one state, two systems. They're clearly not doing that. And I can go on for hours when it comes to the uh, egregious behavior when it comes to human rights and trampling on people's desire for freedom and democracy. So time to look for another market? Uh, I believe we need to send a message to the Chinese regime that we want to continue to trade, and we want to continue to work together, but we need to have respect of human rights and rule of law. We need to have respect of international rule of law. We cannot be in a, a situation where uh, in the world community we have a rogue state not respecting these fundamental values. So I believe the Chinese regime has always understood the bottom line. They have embraced capitalism with fervor, and it seems to me the only thing they understand is the bottom line. So I think we should make them understand as well that we are not going to sell our values as Canadians. Every single Canadian our ancestry, we've come to this country searching for freedom and democracy and respect of the rule of law. So why would we trade it away uh, right now at the benefit of a regime who's becoming enriched at the expense of values? Senator Leo Husakos, thank you for that. Thank you so much.